Hey everybody and welcome to yet another video. Uh, no, I'm not doing an unboxing and no, I'm not showing you what's in my bag or an office tour. So sorry, that is still coming. I wanted to make a quick video, a quick video, which I'm finding is extremely hard to do. But I wanted to make a quick video to jump on and say Merry Christmas to everybody and a Happy New Year in case I'm not on before the New Year again. So I wanted to come and say that. So Merry Christmas everybody. Merry Christmas to all my viewers. Merry Christmas to everybody watching this. And I, I wish a blessed holiday and season for everybody. And that this be a time of relaxation and a time of joy a time of peace and a time to enjoy with others. And with that in mind too, I did want to quickly talk about something that is quite important, especially for this time of the year, and that is mental wellness. This time of the year and during holidays like this, there are a lot of people that have challenges and difficulties that are alone or don't have somebody or have gone through a traumatic situation to where the holidays are not very joyous for them. And it's a very challenging time and it's a very emotional time. It affects everybody. And there's things that we can do and there's things that we can do to help ourselves and that there's things that we can do to actually help others even though we feel we don't have much to give or we don't have much to offer there's always something that can be done to where we can impact and touch somebody else's life and sometimes it's just the smallest thing that can make the biggest impact that we don't even realize so i do want to talk from personal experience um, but before i do that I did uh, quickly print out uh, some a little breakdown here from Canadian Mental Health Association that I wanted to just quickly go over and share with you guys and I'll put the link in the description as well too for those that actually want to uh, look this up and look further into it because they do have some really good ideas. They do have some links and stuff and some resources that you can actually um, look up and use as well too. So a quick little breakdown of some things during this season and holidays in particular, but for whatever reason, Christmas seems to be a big one. Um, they have 15 tips for holiday peace of mind and coping with actual holiday grief, if you are coping with that. So I'll make this as quick as I can, but I do feel that this is extremely important. I do feel that this affects a lot of people and I do feel that it's very important that we do what we can to make a difference regarding this in our lives and with others around us. So one of the, the first thing they're saying is plan ahead. If you're entertaining, use the keep it simple strategy, which I agree with. This time of the year seems to be overcomplicated. Uh, when it comes to get together, when it comes to family get togethers, when it comes to preparing meals, when it comes to shopping, and it's it complicated more than it needs to be. So let's let's bring it back to keeping it simple. Let's turn this holiday back around to keeping it simple, keeping it easy and enjoyable for everybody. Uh, as much as possible, organize and delegate. A lot of the times I think we put so much on ourselves and feel that we have to do everything ourselves and we don't involve other people and we don't delegate things out or we don't feel that we should delegate things out. But I think that would make a world of difference if we actually start realizing that we don't have to put all the pressure on us and that we can actually delegate things out to people. And you know what? If you try to delegate it out and no one wants to do it, then maybe it just needs to be cut. Again, let's keep it simple. Let's, let's minimize the stress that we allow in our lives. And let's take a little bit more control over that. Beware of overindulgence. 
most all of us know about this in one form or another where we overindulge in eating we overindulge in too much eggnog and we just overindulge in a lot of things so a lot of that especially alcohol uh, can dampen the spirits or uh, make for more interesting not so fun experiences as well too so keep that in mind as well too let's not overdo it on the sweets which is so hard to do because this time of the year there is so many good things that come out that only come out at this time of the year so it's so hard because you want to get it all but again like everything moderation keep it within moderation when it comes to sweets eating alcohol and uh, just overdoing it in general so and let's see number six invite others if you have few family or friends reach out to neighbors find ways to spend the holidays with other people uh, if you're part of a if you're a part of a family gathering invite someone you know who is alone to your gathering now that is a good idea um, I know there are a lot of people out there that don't like people or don't like get-togethers or have anxieties when it comes to social gatherings in that way so I know that's a real thing as well too but I think again even if you're dealing with that or if you know someone that is dealing with that I think even an invitation what the invitation would mean to them in the fact that you're actually reaching out to them and you want them to be a part of your celebrations as to your celebrations as well too I think would make a massive impact on that person's life as well and it's an encouragement to encourage them you can let them know if you're aware that they do have social anxieties you can let them know and say hey you don't have to stay for very long if you just want to come hang out eat and leave or whatever we leave that open to you and that is completely acceptable and you don't have to feel that you need to stay the whole time so I think it's important that you let them know that as well too so that they don't feel obligated and force themselves through the whole celebration or event that they're invited to uh, connect with your community again that's another huge good idea as well too in being able to connect with those around you uh, I find community is extremely important in building your own community up and having community having people that you can reach out to help out so that's the biggest thing let's try that again without fixing my hair helping out is huge um, a lot of times I think we feel when we hear the word donate we think money um, I think donating of our time is far more valuable than money now money is important and money is needed because there's a lot of organizations and stuff that are out there that only operate on money that is given and the donations that are given so that is extremely important but we need to not underestimate the value of donating our time so helping out at a food bank helping out less fortunate people and even if you're in a situation or you're dealing with a hard time during this season helping out personally I find allows you to focus outside of what you're dealing with and outside of yourself and giving to others and it is very encouraging and just so you guys know in all of this that I'm going through and sharing with you I I felt the the want and the need to share this with everybody because this year for me is a very challenging time of the year and especially during the Christmas season this year is, is very tough for me and it's a very tough time for me right now so a lot of this stuff that I'm sharing from the mental health society is uh, things that I know and I hold very valuable and I know that they work so I'm not just blowing wind 
uh, in some of the things that I'm sharing with you, but I have experienced and I am experiencing this in life firsthand. So this is why I really, really want to encourage everybody out there that if you are going through a hard time, think through some of these things that may be able to help you. If you're not going through a hard time and this is a good season for you, don't forget about others and reach out to others and your community and the societies and the organizations that are out there. Uh, gift giving made easier and less expensive. Uh, that's another big thing during this time of the year that we put a lot of pressure on ourselves in feeling that we need to spend money and we need to find the perfect gift. And that's not the case. It's, it's pressure that we put on ourselves. And if those, if there's other people that are putting those kinds of pressure on you, then uh, I don't know what to say. So gift giving made easier and less expensive. That's uh, a big thing this time of the year where a lot of people put extra pressure and stress on themselves to find that perfect gift and where they overspend. And uh, I didn't look up stats, but I can probably guarantee you that this time of the year is probably the biggest time of the year where most people overspend and actually go into debt uh, for gift giving and celebrations. And that's not needed. Again, let's go back to number one and let's keep it simple. Let's bring the fun back into these celebrations and into the Christmas season. And let's not buy into the commercialism that is so heavy this time of the year. So do small things. Do simple things. To me, what matters the most to me is if someone was to make something for me and it was simple, to me that's more heartfelt and meaningful than something being purchased. Anybody can go out and buy anything for somebody. Again, let's get back to the basics and let's keep it simple and let's start creating things for people again. Let's start making things. Let's, let's use the gifts and abilities that we have and share those with others and uh, save more money that way. Remember the weather doesn't help and uh, this, this is a true, so I'm going to read this because, uh, and then I'll elaborate on this, but I'll actually read what the Canadian Mental Health Association says about the weather. Some people do get the weather blahs each year, and, as, and a much smaller number, 2 to 3%, develop seasonal affective disorder, and they call it SAD. Paying attention to nutrition, exercise, and sleep, and being careful with alcohol are almost in, also important if you have a history of depression. So if you guys have not heard about this, I have heard about this, and I know that it can be a serious thing in having seasonal depression, in wintertime especially. Uh, in Alberta, I know we're extremely fortunate here in the fact that regardless of winter or summer, we get sun pretty much year-round. So it could be minus 40 outside unless it's blowing wind with a blizzard. We still get sunshine. But the lack of sunshine, I know, affects a lot of people. And there are solutions around that. One simple one that I know is you can actually buy sunlight lights or lamps to, to help with that. Um, as well, I know that the vitamin and nutrition, so taking additional vitamins. I think it's vitamin D. Now I could be wrong so you need to do your own research on this but I think if you take the vitamin D um, and again watch your nutrition, watch what you eat and exercise and you can actually help fix a lot of those things um, and that does help and fix a lot of depression in that sense is being active, being healthy, watching the foods you eat, cut out the junk foods and eat more healthy nutritious foods and it does make a difference. And again, I am speaking from experience and I, I do know that to be true. And uh, CMHA, living life to the full. Uh, so I'll give you some information, more information on what they're talking about with that, living life to the full. Just the small things of learning how to cut down the stress in our lives and the stress during this time of the year. 
And again, I think a lot of these suggestions definitely would help. And again, just bringing it back to keeping it simple. Uh, 11, they're talking about here. So talking about the deceased person is okay. Your stress will only increase if the deceased person's memory is allowed to become a landmine that everybody trips around. So that's something this time of the year as well too that we need to be very aware and sensitive of um, for others and if we're dealing with it ourselves that it's okay to talk about these things and it's you do need to talk about these things. You can't just hold it in and keep it inside. You do need to express it and for those of us that aren't going through it we need to be understanding of the individual that is going through that and understand that them talking about it is important and allow them to bring up the memories and the happy memories and the good memories and allow them to process through the hurt and the feelings. Uh, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Uh, let's see, number 12, things won't be the same. It's normal to feel at odds with yourself in family events when dealing with grief. Try not to hide away, but don't feel guilty about setting limits on how much events you attend. And again, that is important. And again, that's something that I'm reminding myself of this year is you know, things, things will be different and they won't be the same from times past. But again, don't suppress those thoughts, don't suppress those feelings, but actually deal with them as they come up. And again, when they do, um, be mindful as well too. And this is such an easy thing for most people to do, including myself as, as, as social as I am. Um, is hiding out, is uh, excluding yourself from everything and excluding yourself from people. It's not good and it's not healthy. Even though you may not feel like seeing or hanging out with people, try to get over that and force yourself to spend some time out and some time out with others. It's extremely important. And again, you don't have to feel obligated to spend the whole day with somebody but it's important to reach out, get out. And if you don't wanna leave your home and you have the means and the technology, maybe ask somebody if you can join them by Zoom or if you can do a FaceTime call uh, and join in the festivities a little bit and stuff like that. Um, personally, from my experience, I would highly recommend that you do get out and be active. And that's another important thing that we did cover as well too is is be active um, don't just sit around don't just mope around as hard as it may be don't let your emotions take full control of your life but rise above those don't ignore them you need to deal with them but get out and I don't mean this in a negative way I'm saying this to me as well get off your butt and do something and it will help and it'll make you feel a whole lot better. Don't let other people's expectation don't let other people's expectations dictate how your holidays will unfold. And that again I know is a huge one for a lot of us whether we're in a tough situation or an uneasy situation or not. Especially in family gatherings and stuff. That can be very challenging and difficult as well too because it's being dictated to you how they want the holidays to go or how they think they should go but you don't have to buy into that if you don't feel like doing something this holiday season don't let others force you if you do not want to attend holiday functions make sure you know your limits leave early arrive late drive alone do whatever you need to do to help yourself, but still be able to get out and enjoy time with others. Think about building some new traditions. So that is number 15. So remember that it's okay not to do what you traditionally do. 
Planning something totally different is not an insult to the memory of a loved one and can be a positive way to ease some of the pressure. That said, one of the traditions may include planning a special time to celebrate the memories of the person that has died or the person that is no longer a part of your life uh, and the things that you're dealing with for that. Some families develop creative rituals like decorating a miniature Christmas tree at the, at the cemetery, donating money to a charity, singing their favorite seasonal song, and recruiting a, reciting a special prayer before the evening meal, or even just lighting a candle. Symbolic gestures like these can help families validate their feelings of sadness and overcome the guilt of enjoying the special occasions. And so a lot of the times I think that's what we end up dealing with as well too is we, we feel that we shouldn't. We shouldn't be able to celebrate or we shouldn't be able to feel happy during that time, especially if we've lost somebody that we've had in our lives and lived with for so long. Uh, holidays can be very challenging and we feel that I shouldn't be happy. Um, I shouldn't celebrate with them not here anymore. So again, like they mentioned, that's a good idea. Maybe come up with a tradition, a new tradition that you want to do that will help celebrate that person's life, um, whether they're deceased or whether they're still alive, to help celebrate that person's life and what they meant to you or what they mean to you, whether they're there or not. So I know again, that can be very tough and challenging, but again, uh, I just wanted to share these things with you guys because I know there's a lot of people out there that are facing some challenges and find Christmas very difficult. And we also, I think, get lost in traditions that may not be ours, uh, traditions that we've never really enjoyed, but we've just gone along with anyways. Um, we get lost in the commercialism of what this um, celebration and what this time of the year means. We get so lost in the commercialism of, you know, buy this, buy this, save now, don't pay till whenever, uh, you need to find the perfect gift. We've got society, societal pressures all around us, and they seem so heavy this time of the year, pretty much starting November right till February with all of the sales and everything else that are going on. You know, sales are always going to happen, people. When, when you see the advertisement saying you'll never have or you'll never see a sale like this again, that's bull. There's always going to be a sale and there's always going to be an opportunity to buy that thing that you want. And again, as mentioned from the Canadian Mental Health Association is uh, don't put so much pressure on yourself for having to buy a gift or having to buy that perfect gift. Don't put yourself in a financial situation to where you're overstretching yourself and you're overindulging financially this time of the year. Come mid-January, people's stress levels are up so high because they've overspent and they've gone into debt for something that in the end doesn't really matter. If you don't have the money, don't spend it. Find a creative way to show your care and appreciation for others in, in making something, in doing something for them. Uh, so again, just don't put so much pressure on yourself. Don't so, put so much pressure on trying to make this holiday perfect for somebody else or doing things the way somebody else wants to do it. Try to find middle ground uh, with everybody to be able to, again, celebrate and enjoy this season and enjoy this time of the year. And personally, for myself, I do want to share with you guys um, why I do celebrate Christmas and I do celebrate Christmas uh, because I do believe in the birth of Jesus Christ during this time of the year and when when we do celebrate Christmas and that's what Christmas does mean to me 
and that is the most important thing to me. But with that being said as well, uh, it is also a big time of the year for family and for events and for get-togethers. So a lot of what I'm sharing with you, I'm having to remind myself and I'm actually processing and going through as well too and being able to enjoy and celebrate this time of the year um, but still deal with the things that I'm going through as well too and not hiding in a room, not hiding away from people but just getting out there and helping and finding how I can get involved in the community and find where I can help others that are less fortunate than me and uh, how I can change and make a difference in other people's lives. To me that is the most important and that is the biggest thing is we all have the capacity and we all have the ability to make a deep, long-lasting, positive influence and impact on people's lives. And again, it's the smallest things that we do that can do that. So, that is serious. That is very meaningful to me. And I felt that I really did want to share this with everybody. I just wanted to thank you all for watching. I know this was a bit of a long video. Um, again, I do feel it was extremely important to share this. Uh, this time of the year, I know, can be very challenging for a lot of people in so many different ways. And this touches my heart greatly. And uh, this does affect my life. And I just wanted to share with you, not only just from a legitimate organization like the Mental Health Association, but also just share with you personally my, my input and the ways that uh, I'm finding have helped me to get through rough times. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for putting, putting up with the long video, but I hope you understand the importance of this. And I hope, you know, if this reaches and makes a difference in one person's life, to me, the video was definitely worth it. So I hope this does help you. I hope this does and can help people that you do know uh, to get through this season. So again, thank you very much for watching everybody. So Merry Christmas to all of us from Canadian Drone Zone. Thank you so much again for watching. Please like, subscribe, leave your comments. And again, in regards to this video, if you actually have additional information or links or things that you found that have helped you, please definitely put them in the comments. Uh, so that we can share them with everybody that is watching and has watched or will be watching this video.